early January 2018, and I'm heading out for a short paddle to celebrate a new year in Howe Sound, or at Katsum, as it's known to the Skohomish peoples. My plan is to stay close to home and just poke around Deep Bay, right next door to the village of Snug Cove on Bowen Island. Deep Bay, or Mannion Bay as many know it, is pretty quiet today, but in summer it bustles with swimmers and boaters. Right away, I'm pretty surprised by the number of gulls hanging around. And I'm also surprised by the cormorants. I'd expect to see a few, but today there are several dozen roosting on the rocks and out on the bay fishing. And then I see the seals. Wow, all this life tells me something is up. So I look around, and there across the bay is a circling wheel of gulls. So I paddle over. There is a big noisy flock of gulls on the water. I quietly slide up to a nearby float and watch. There is way more going on here than I've guessed. At least half a dozen seals keep popping up their heads. And there are cormorants diving and mergansers. As I watch, the gulls drift closer and closer. So I lower my underwater camera. stunned. I had no idea. I could not have guessed such a beautiful ballet was just below the surface. I look up. The gulls are plunging down and grabbing fish. I am shocked. I have always thought of gulls as scavengers, not as skilled hunters. Up on surface, what a drama. I see a gull rise up, dive into the water, and come up with a small silver fish. And instantly, another gull attacks, wrestling the fish away. It is really fierce. But I cannot keep my eyes off the underwater ballet, the thrust and flow of seal and fish. I know full well that this is not play, that this is the hunter and the hunted. But I am overwhelmed by the grace and beauty of both partners in the chase. And then, I see the sea lion. There is no mistaking the sea lion's greater size, an unpatterned brown and buff coat. And where the seals thrust themselves with sideways strokes of their two hind flippers, the sea lion flies on wing beats of its long front flippers. I am amazed by the snake-like flexibility of the sea lion as it maneuvers to catch a fish. So who are these fish? Herring? Anchovy? I see no telltale silver dollar flashes or flared gills, so typical of anchovy when they're feeding. 
They could be herring, but they might also be anchovy that are not feeding. And how could they be feeding, chaste as they are? To know who they are, I need to see the detail of their mouths. Anchovy have a snout that protrudes well ahead of their lower jaw, something like a shark, while a herring's lower jaw juts forward. For a moment, the fish are very close to my camera. And yes, I can see their mouths, their anchovy. Their shark-like mouth is just obvious. This entire feeding frenzy makes so obvious how important anchovy are to how sounds marine life. And it reminds me that without anchovy, herring, smelt, sand lance, and other schooling fish, a vital link in the food chain is missing. These small fish eat the sound's plankton and convert it into a rocket fuel of rich oily meat on which marine mammals, birds, and salmon thrive. This all seems so improbable. I have just witnessed the most remarkable wild nature, and it happened not in some remote corner of Howe Sound, but in my ocean front yard, among the moored boats and waterfront homes of friends. I look around. I doubt anyone looking on has any idea of the remarkable underwater ballet underway right here, right now. There is just so much more to this neighborhood than any of us might guess. I paddle on, so alive, so connected. These gulls, cormorants, mergansers, seals, sea lions, and anchovy are my neighbors. Their ancestors came here long before mine. I, I moved into their neighborhood. They make their living here as I do. They go about their lives as I go about mine. And that, that makes me smile. <laughs>